Anglican Church, his Archbishop, the affected students, and the entire college and the general public. Now, recounting, he said an unfortunate incident happened during a church service by the college's chaplains, chaplaincy board in appreciation of the level 300 students who would be going for their Marco teaching, that's off-campus teaching practice, when college resumed the next academic year. The students seen in the video performed extraordinarily well and were therefore called to be appreciated by the chaplain. An attempt to add a human touch resulted in the scene in the video. Reverend Father Labi said, Beyond asking for forgiveness, the chaplain also rendered an unqualified and sincere apology to my archbishop, the entire Anglican community communion, the college, the affected students and their families, and the generality of the public. The Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education Service, GES, have also joined uh, the Mampon Diocese of the Anglican Church to investigate the conduct of uh, Reverend Labi. All right, my sister, we leave it here. Well, it's a very good thing that the priest has apologized. And it's a very good thing that the priest has said that he should have acted differently, even with that COVID-19. Now, it is clear that the circumstances behind this kissing, my brother, my sister, these students qualified, according to this report, performed extraordinarily well. And for that matter, the chaplain was supposed to congratulate them. And his way of congratulating them was to give them a holy kiss. A holy kiss on the lip. As to whether their tongues touched or not, your guess is as good as mine. Whatever it is, COVID-19 is rife. But the priest said he apologizes and that he should have done better. My brother, let us get deeper. In this country, our culture is quite weird. When people apologize, we forget everything and let them go. So people take us for granted every time or most of the time when they apologize. In our parlance, they tell you, say you are sorry before you are sorry. In the local cycles, my brother, my sister, they will tell you that saying sorry does not break your bone. In other words, a lot of people only say sorry just because they want to be left off the hook and not because they are truly sorry. True or false? Somewhere outside this country, the laws would work. Yes, you are sorry you apologized, but the law remains the law. What does the law say about what you did? Your being sorry does not change the law. Are you supposed to be punished or not? What kind of punishment is supposed to be meted out to you? It's about time we look beyond apologies. In fact, in our country, an apology is nothing but leave me off the hook. Better still, let me off the hook and let me walk away. That's what it means. My brother, my sister, now I want to get deeper. When it comes to the Catholic Church, both international and even local, it has become so notorious for some of these things. Now you guys agree that you are not going to marry. You want to be like Jesus Christ and spend all your time Praying and getting closer to God. I commend you for that. I cannot do that. Maybe he cannot also do that. Because of that, we are not part of the seminary. If you willingly decide that, hey, you don't want to marry, you want to spend all your time worshiping God, again, I commend you. I have no qualms. Anytime you think that your libido has become so high, and for that matter, you cannot stand by what you said you are going to stand by.
be honest enough to step out of the cassock. But in our society, no. They will hide behind the cassock and commit heinous crimes. How many priests are gay? Now the Catholic Church has been so bedeviled with homosexuality and lesbianism that it is almost legalizing it in so many places around the world. Gay marriages. We have been told time and again how churches, especially the Catholic Church, has decided to let it pass. That the laws are changing. And therefore we have to also move along and be abreast with the times. I don't have a problem with what you think. But I have a problem. When you continue hiding behind the cassock and be doing things that you said you would not do. How many times have we seen Catholic priests and even Anglican priests who commit serious crimes and instead of being dealt with, they rather transfer them as if transferring somebody was such a punishment. That is why in our country, anytime you transfer somebody they see it as a punishment. My boss doesn't like me. He hates me so much. Look, he transferred me all the way from Accra to Binduri. I see the people in Binduri are, are extraterrestrial animals. You live in a country. You are proud to be part of this country. You should be proud to serve in every part of this country. That is why we all must stand firm and fight for the length and breadth of this country to have equal opportunities. But everybody is drifting to the city. When you have an appointment in the city, you are so happy because you see traffic lights. You see street lights. In your village, you can't see traffic lights. You can't see street lights. So the rural urban drift is too much. My brother, my sister, since when has punishment, uh, uh, since when has transfer become punishment? But a lot of people get so angry when they hear that they are being transferred. Today, I don't want to be spending too much time on some of these things. Now the bishop, the priest has come out to say he's sorry for whatever he has done. But the hammer should still land. He did it. What does the Anglican church say about things like this? I leave it here. Brother and sister, I'm going to look at the next thing very quickly. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my God, have mercy. Ah, 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 ah. So many things are happening in this country. Mm -mm -mm. It's interesting. And I want to look at this interesting thing right now and let's look at it very seriously and deal with it right now mm -mm -mm. oh my god there is something here i need to look out and it says government owes student nurses four months al allowance listen government owes student nurses four months allowances and this was published today the 20th of august 2021 i read student nurses at the bolgatanga nursing training college bntc in the upper east region say their allowances are in four months arrears the students acknowledge that allowances for january february march were paid however they are yet to receive allowances for april may june and july Mr. Benjamin Asana Ndeguma, the president of the Students' Representatives Council, SRC, said this when Mr. Stephen Yakubu, the Upper East Regional Minister, visited the college to interact with staff and students as part of his scheduled visits to uh, health training institutions in the region. I leave it. That's the same thing I was talking about. Rural urban drift. The length and breadth of this country are not equally developed. 
when Kwame Nkrumah came, he made sure that scholarships were given to the people of the north. All because of these inadequacies in the development of the area. My brother, my sister, when the white man came here, he was only interested in places where he could find gold and diamond. He was only interested in places he could find minerals. He couldn't find any mineral in the north, so he didn't bother himself to go there. Where he found minerals, he built railways to link up those areas so he could milk and steal more gold and diamonds. Those areas that had no gold, no diamond, no bauxite, he didn't dare. For him, those places did not even exist. In fact, something you might not know. The white man, the areas that he could not find gold, diamond and the rest, you know what he did? He turned those places into his slave camps. That is why in history, better still, let, let me limit it to this country, the issue of this country, more nordness have been taken into slavery more than any other person in Ghana. Did you know that? In fact, we are the white man sending his stooges down to the north because he realized that the people from that area were physically strong. Number two, we are dangerous slave raiders. Babatu, my brother, my sister, and Samoriture, who also harvested slaves from that area and sold to the white man. So slavery, was what the white man saw as the mineral of the north. Whilst he harvested the gold and the diamond and the bauxite over here in the south, he harvested slaves from the north. My brother, my sister, because of the inequalities in development, when Kwame Nkrumah started his things, he looked at the north and said, listen, let us develop the north too so it can catch up with the south. Free scholarship, encouraging people to go to school and so on and so forth my brother in my days if sadness and when i say sadness i'm talking about people who are outside the northern region not only people from the regular south the voltarians people from accra central and western regions if they ever went to the north to school it's because they couldn't find schools in the south true or false you go to Tamale Secondary School, 99% of the students are all nordness. The few sadness you see there is because they couldn't get admission into the southern schools. So ask yourself, did nordness get the chance to go to school in the south? They were limited to the schools in the north. It took the extra rich northern parents to venture to take their awards outside the northern schools. One, for acceptability, and two, to match up with the inequalities in teaching, in development, in facilities, and so on and so forth. When Nkrumah came, he wanted to disperse all that. But some people still fought the Northern Extraction Scholarship, NES. I leave it. What point is Black Rasta making? Imagine. If all nursing training colleges have received their monies, those in the north, Bolgatanga, three months, four months, no allowances. How would the nurses deal with this? Look at where Bolga is. Four months, no allowances. So I ask a big question. Politicians. Have their salaries ever been in arrears? Never. Before the month ends, MPs are all paid. It hits the account. Some of them, ironically, double salaries. And some of them, according to the reports we see, they pocket the double salaries and keep quiet. But those who need it most, allowance for students, it's a problem. And you claim you are in a democracy. Have you been to Bolgatanga before? The sun hits there as if they manufactured the sun. 
In Bolgatanga, the land is so dry. My brother, when the Hamatan hits, you will think that you are in the desert. They have tried in the past to do some agriculture. Interestingly, a greater part of the food for this country comes from that area, the northern part. The place where the sun is hitting most, the place where the land is so scorched, produces more food than the other places where they have rain every second. You know why? Because in our country, we have belittled farmers that anybody who is a farmer is either an illiterate or he has nothing to do. Two. Because we do not have job opportunities, the people over there decide that, well, if we cannot match up with the people in the south, fight over jobs with them, fight over school facilities with them, as for the ground, you don't need any certificate to till it. So they start to till it. I was in America the other day. What state was that? I think that was New Jersey. Jersey City, yes. And I walked into a shop. Hey! I saw people around looking at something. I started to go check. It was yams. Bayere. You know what they wrote on it? Ghana yams. Ghana yams. And I said, wow. So I asked the attendant, why Ghana yams? Is it only Ghana that produces yam in the whole world? He said, the best yams in the whole world, not even Jamaica's yellow yam, is from Ghana. New Jersey, in Jersey City. I said, really? He said, all these people who are coming to buy yam, they would not buy it if it's not Ghana yam. Even Jamaicans are beginning to kick away their yellow yam in order to eat Ghana yam. You ask yourself, where is Ghana yam from in Ghana? From the north. From the illiterate farmer who is not respected. From the farmer who is about 98 years old. His back is bent like C, turned upside down. Let us see. He's still tilling the ground. And feeling, feeding belly full politicians who have no regard for him. When their children go to school, the facilities are minimal. In my days, we were going to school, my brother and myself, with lanterns. Bobo, Bobo, Bobo. Some of us went to school with that at Tumu. Lantern. When students were going to school, they held their lantern and their chumoks they carried. I did that. And a lot of students still, still do that. Carry a whole chop box with a, a trunk on it. But we carried that, rolled up our blankets and our mattresses on top, and then held lanterns. Lantern. Producer put a photograph of a lantern so that they would see what a lantern is. We held it like this. Kerosene lantern, like that. In the night, when there was no light. Light? You talking about light? Do you know when light hits the northern region? Do you know? The first time I saw traffic light was on TV. And the second time I saw it physically was right here in Accra. My brother, my sister, not even in Kumasi. Lantern, carry that. When it was night, everybody, chick, then they open it. They taught us how to wipe that bulb, the glass bulb in it, like that, to wipe inside it because it will get dark and then light it and then carry it. it taught us everything about the lantern. And the night, we put it on the table and opened our books reading. I read with lanterns. How many of you read with that? The farmer who produces the Ghana yam, which is the most respected yam in the whole world. Even Chinese are eating Ghana yam. But they dwell too much on cocoa. Dwell too much on oil. Ghana yam. The farmer who produces Ghana yam. His daughter has gone to the nursing school. His son has gone to the nursing school. He is so disrespected. He does not even earn much from the yams that he produces. So, he can only afford something small to give to his son and his daughter 
to go to school. They go to school and for four months. Four solid months. No allowance. They are supposed to be able to pass the same examination as those in the south who receive their allowances before the month ends. Some of who are even sitting in air-conditioned classrooms. Some of who have never even seen a bee, let alone a church fly. Some of who, my brother, my sister, have never seen the sun so hot that you look at your skin and you think that you are about to become green. Green in color. Inequalities. And every time, what they do is, they bring a northern vice president. Aliu Mahama came. Baumia came. We had a northern president. Hila Liman. Another northern president. Mahama. What did they really do like Kwame Nkrumah did? You don't have to come from that area before you think about the inequalities of that area. Am I speaking sense? If this was about the Volta region, I will still speak about it. So much inequalities. Those of you who had the privilege to attend schools in the north. We had students who went to school in the north and left after a year or so to return to the south and repeat their class. They preferred coming back to repeat. Even two years repetition, they were okay to being promoted in the north three times. Terrible. The road network is zero. Right now, some development is going, let's be real. Some development is going there. And things are going on. Somebody will sit down in the sun and say, oh, these people, they like fighting. They have nothing to do. There's no employment. They are digging the ground to plant maize so you can eat. They are planting yam, which is exported and is the best yam in the whole world. What have they done to promote the Ghana yam? Oh, is it because it's from the north? You promote cocoa so much. Africa has even overtaken you in cocoa production. Brazil is staring you in your, in your, in your, in your eyes. Yet the Ghana yam is the best yam all over. As for share butter, the least said about it, the better. There are a lot of things we can hold on to from the north that can bring development to the north. Year of re return, it ended in Accra at the airport. How many people even were able to go down north to go and see the production of share butter? How many people went to the Volta region to see how a plant is being produced? How many people went to Ashanti region to see fufu, proper fufu? I wake up in the morning, I want to drink cocoa. As somebody from the north who knows the quality of cocoa, then they go and bring me Aigbe cocoa. So oh, this is cocoa, and I open and say, ah, don't bring a northerner this kind of cocoa. This is for the Evers. I know what cocoa is. This Aigbe cocoa. If I want to eat proper fufu, my brother, my sister, I might go to the Ashanti region. The Northerners have their own kind of fufu, which is only yam. I ate only yam fufu. So when I came to the Ashanti region, and they gave me some fufu that looked like elastic. Ah, what is this? So they had yam. They put a little bit of a, a plantation. Ah, plantain in fufu. Ah, are they? So yeah, that's it. That's proper fufu. You people are eating something else. Tradition is so beautiful. The culture is sweet. Different people, different, different ideas and different things. But the point is equal development. Or else this problem would continue. That is why once in a while you hear about some seclusions. Some people say they want to break away secessions, left, right and center. Look at the Volta region. They want to leave. And they are talking to the Northerners to join them so that they will all leave. Because they've realized that the development is not reaching them. They have realized that when they are talking about Ghana, they don't include them. 
And you all know why. During independence, they wanted to call this country a Khan land. I've said it time and again. Because they didn't see any other ethnic group to be important. A Khan land is all about Akans. Apart from Akans, all other ethnic groups in this country do not matter. They can go to Togo. If they want, they can even go to Burkina Faso. That's where they belong. True or false? In these times, we have to look beyond the so-called tribes and ethnicities. We have to look at what we have. When you go to America, you don't have that problem. Oh, these people from Missouri. Oh, these people from this. Oh, they are this. They are. Nah, nah, nah. They see themselves as Americans. Development, the national cake is spread equally, not us. If we have an Nzema president, he's going all the way to Nzema to turn it into El Dorado. If we have a northern president, he's looking up to the north. No, that will not help us. To the health ministry. So you owe allowances and you had enough money to pay criminals for Sputnik V. Listen, oh. you owe students four months. Yet you are able to conjure money to pay criminals in the UAE, Dubai, to get Sputnik V. I've said it time and again. Hunger kills us in this country more than COVID-19. In this country, corruption kills us faster and even more than COVID-19. Who doesn't believe? Corruption is killing us. You go to the hospital. If you are lucky to get a bed, the medicine that is supposed to be free, no, some doctors packaged it and have sold it out to some other people. So the medicine is finished. Buy your own medicine. Even if it is there and it's supposed to be for free, they will tell you it's finished. But they can get some for you if you pay this amount of money. True or false? People are on the verge of death. Operation. Doctor says, oh, until you pay this amount of money, we cannot operate. What happened to the health insurance? Corruption. We don't care. Yesterday I was at the airport to see a friend off. And at the airport, it looks like Ghana airport is not part of the country. You know why? I think we should start hoisting the American flag at the Ghana airport. You hardly see a Ghana flag. That's one. Number two, something that you buy for five cities on the streets of Accra you go to the airport and it's 200 Ghana cities. Because they say the spaces are so expensive. In order to deal with the rent, you would have to increase the price. Nose mask, what we call nose masks in Ghana. Better still face mask. One is five Ghana cities at the airport. And you say you are fighting COVID-19. They should have face marks free at the airport. True or false? But no, they are selling it for five cities. One face mask. One face mask. Five Ghana cities. So if a tourist is arriving and then maybe he messes up his uh, face mask on the airplane or he has to change it, five cities. And they say, oh, these people, they have money. It doesn't matter. They won't return. How many of us go to a place and because things are cheap there, we want to go back? Same way. If things are expensive elsewhere, you won't go there. Don't take people for fool. Treat everybody equally. The rich man's money is not your money. Don't think that he got his money cheaply. For that matter, you should swindle him. Yet you go to church and you blow tongues more than the Jesus himself. We need to look at all. I'm so saddened by this thing that is happening in Bolgatanga. The nursing training. Look! Forget about these allowances. Go to the school and look at the facilities. You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked that there are more mosquitoes at the Bolgatanga NTC. More than even in Choco. 
you will be shocked that they are sharing classrooms eh, with rats and snakes. Because everything in the north is weird. It's off the chain. The people in the north do not get what other people around get. Volta is almost the same trouble. Yet we claim that we are one country. Why wouldn't people want to secede? Break away! Because they have been cheated for too long. Demeaned for too long. You have no money to pay. Allowances. Four months. Yet you have money to give to criminals to bring you Sputnik V. You have money to increase the president's salary by 79%. You have enough money to try to buy an aeroplane for the president to fly up and, and bath in the skies. You have money to increase all ministers' salaries. But no money for the future leaders who are students now. You see the kind of country we live in? In some countries, it's interesting. They treat their students like gold. Because the quality of the students coming out will determine the quality of the country in the near future. How many people don't agree? Today I saw a joke on Facebook and I cracked up. It said in Australia, every student is on time. But if a student comes late, which is rare to class, or maybe the student goes out for break and comes late, what they do is they will give you a piece of dry bread. No margarine, no butter, nothing. And ask you to eat, finish eating that before you come and sit in the class. So, some Ugandan educationists went to Australia for a refresher course. And they thought this would be a good thing to introduce in Uganda and also in Rwanda. When they came, the students who were coming late, they were giving them dry bread. In Australia, it would take one student about 15 to 30 minutes to eat a small piece of dry bread. When they introduced that in Uganda and also in Rwanda, 30 seconds, the bread was gone. And when the student was asked to come and sit in the class, he didn't want to. He wanted to go and come back late again so he would get another loaf of dry bread. In no time, teachers themselves started coming late so that they could be punished with dry bread. Jesus have mercy. We have become so deprived and depraved, my brother, my sister, that what is punishment to others is luxury to us. Is it too deep? I am saying that we have become so deprived and depraved that what is punishment to others and universally, a punishment is luxury to us. Our human rights are trampled night and day. Our prisons are nothing but hell. Even Satan will refuse to live in our prison. Satan is joking that he's in hell. If you drop Satan in this country, my brother, my sister, he will beg to return to hell because this country is a senior hell to the cell Satan is in. Go to our prisons. Anytime I go to the prison, I cry. So many people packed up as if they were not human beings, subhumans. Hey! Prison that is supposed to be a reformatory institution. My brother, my sister, is hell. Senior hell. Satan himself will refuse to go there. A new prisoner is sent there because he stole a goat. A goat is even too big, a fowl. For his pregnant wife because she had a cold. And he couldn't afford to buy a fowl for a uh, so he stole one stray fowl. Unfortunately, whilst he was preparing it, the aroma went all over the place. And then the owner of the fowl came around and identified the feathers of the fowl. So the 24-year-old 
foul thief is taken to court. Speedily, they decide on this case in less than 15 seconds. He's in jail. The moment he arrives in jail, his anus, his buttocks, will become the delicacy of prisoners who have not had sex for the past 50 years. They are in jail. The moment he arrives, bend down. Bend down. Slaps. He goes down. If he's lucky, they'll put some small shea butter there. If it's not lucky, raw. Ajay, Ajay, shut up. Sodomize you night and day until you become so used to sodomy. You go to prison to be reformed. You come out a hardened criminal. You went to prison. You did not know anything about sodomy. Now you come out and your wife does not even please you anymore. You come out. The wife that you stole the fowl for, she waited for you to come out. You were not coming out. So she got married to another man. Where is the reformation? In some countries, they have their wives and husbands visiting them in prison for their sexual interests. Not here. Not here. This punishment is hell. And these are people who are supposed to be reformed. So we will reintroduce them into society to help society build. But no, we send them to make them worse of all people. Reintroduce them to just finish us. Brethren, there's still hope. Sometimes it looks so hopeless. Sometimes it looks so gloomy, so dark. But behind every dark cloud, there is a silver lining. Bolgatanga, I sympathize with you. Maybe it's only Bolgatanga that came out. Nalergu. Gambaga, hey, eh, Bunkurgu, hey, Afia Tome, and all those places, maybe some of them seven months, nothing. But the politician salary never delays. That is why politicians never go on strike until they are in opposition. They start demonstrating. I feel it so much when I'm talking about my people and I'm talking about, you know, Black people, we have a problem. And this problem can only be solved by us. We all just need a little bit of patriotism. And if we are a little patriotic, our attitudes will change. And when our attitudes change, automatically the nation will change. And when we are voting, we have to vote along common sense. Not tribal lines and not whose face looks more handsome than the other. We must vote for people who have brains. You don't vote presidents into dormitories. So this is too deep for somebody to understand. You vote presidents into the presidency. Not the residency. Jesus Christ, Black Rasta. Teach! We are voting presidents into residence. Ha la 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 Ruba Sarabada Katatora Kati Sasaboda. We are voting presidents into residence. The presidency has become a residence. What's Black Rasta talking about? You vote them to sleep. Some people are called, oh, his eminence. But our president is his sleepiness, Mr. Sleepy Dent. Resident in the Sleepy Dent. Jesus have mercy. When you speak, some people say, hey, he doesn't respect, he's not, you know, your talk will not let us stop talking. At the end of the day, this country must grow. Bolga, when you receive the, that, the allowance, let us know. Four months allowance. Health minister is still sitting there. Huh? President is joking around. 
Joker president with his comedian vice president. Firebone them. Firebone them. You go to Drobo. You go to Bono Ahafo. And you are joking with a serious issue about the health minister. The foolishness of the health minister who decided to sign a contract without telling us, his employers. And when we want him out, his sleepiness, Mr. Sleepy Dent, is clowning around. Is it not harsh? Is it not painful? Is it not painful? Are you not feeling it? You are not feeling it. Your salary is always paid. You want to even use our money to pay your wife. Bulga, they are sitting there. Four months, no salary. Oh, yo, P, the uncle. Oh, yo, oh, yo, oh, yo, papa, papa. Oh, yo, P. Well, I'm going to tackle another thing quickly. And then we let it rest. Normally on Friday, we don't do this. We take it cool. But when we see the issues are so much, we touch them. Today is one such case. I need you to open your ears and listen and discuss with me. It's not a monologue. It sounds like a monologue, but it's not. It's only a prologue. <laughs> it's a prologue. You got to continue from wherever you are. Let's look at these things, my brother, my sister, and let's deal with our nation or else we are in trouble. Jesus have mercy. I'm going to tackle the next thing and this one Today when I looked at it, I told myself, mm, Black Cross, I don't tackle this because the man involved was my lecturer at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. And he was a good lecturer. Very, very affable. But the nation first. <laughs> this is from Peace FM Online. And it says, it's, it was published today, the 20th of August, 2021. It says, cocoa production hits record high. Yields 1,033 tons. Remember what Bloomberg wrote? You remember? That Ghana is going to produce cocoa that is so high that for the past 10 years, we have never yielded anything like that. This is what my lecturer is saying. I'm going to read. Hmm. Ghana has set a new cocoa production record with 1.033 million tons of beans for the 2020-2021 season. This comes six weeks before the 2020-2021 cocoa season gets to a close, which means that the figure can still go up before the harvest period ends. The previous record was 1.024 million tons which were recorded in the 2010, 2020, 2011. So that misses 10 years as recorded and reported by Bloomberg. The chief executive officer, see, that's the CEO of the Ghana Cocoa Board, uh, Mr. Joseph Buahinedu. This was my lecture at UST Kumasi, announced this at a press conference in Accra yesterday. Aside announcing the new production figures, the press conference was also to introduce new electric weighing scales, which have been procured by Cocoa Board for the licensed cocoa buying companies. i leave it here. My brother, they are saying that the last one was what? And that this one is a record high, at least for the last 10 years. Okay. Look, you see, when your mother dies, and you go out telling everybody that your mother is sleeping, it's just a matter of time. You have destroyed the land. EU has refused to even take cocoa from Ghana. Because you have turned all your fertile cocoa lands into Galamse sites. The EU gave money out for you to be able to deal with the cocoa farms and so on and so forth. Because you dwell so much on cocoa. 
Upon Kruma announced it. Only for the EU to return and realize the money that was given you to deal with the cocoa farms and the farmers. You have turned those lands. Farmers have sold their lands to Chinese to use as Galamsey sites. The cocoa farms that were there, all the cocoa have been cut down and the land has been used as Galamsey sites. How on earth are you able to still beat a record when your cocoa farms are dwindling? Oh, let's get smarter. The new electric scales that you are bringing, have you altered them? We are saying this. The new cocoa scales, the electric scales that have been mentioned here, have they been altered to show to the public that, oh, this is it, yet behind it, it is not it. Seeing and not seeing. As if, but not. Conjugal visits are not allowed in the prisons in Ghana. In the prisons is all punishment. And even on our farms, it is nothing but punishment. Our culture says you cannot have sex on your farm. Our culture says that, oh, some days you cannot even go to the farm. And a lot of people are still holding on to this. Yes, culture is beautiful. Culture is nice. Can we investigate some of these things? Why did our ancestors do that? Is there a reason? Is it the same reason in these times? We have to be abreast with the times and stop the foolishness. You are still feeding your, your gods with the white man's schnapps. Why would your gods not be drunk? Your gods are eating pizza. Your gods don't eat pepper anymore. No, they are drinking schnapps and eating pizza. They become white man's gods. So they will listen to the white man first. Because if they don't listen to the white man, he will deny them of the what? Schnapp and the pizza. Your gods don't like to Ozafi. As for Fufu, your gods hate Fufu. Black player, they hate that. They want pizza. So every now and then you are holding Schnapp. Green bottle. Hey, bu, 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 bu. hey, yao, 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 yao. You don't come to see that you have been. Let me hold that word down. You are feeding your ghost with the white man's drink. So now when they are pouring it, they pour a little. Tea. If you pour it too much, Wulo may stand it by a slap your back. Pa! Hey, me no care. Pour it too much. Pour small, we we'll take the rest and go and drink ourselves. Right now, the ghosts hate a petition. They hate our own water. They hate pet play. They want snap. My brother, my sister, we need to look at some of those things. Back into the cocoa farm, I doubt this. I don't know what you think. Age. That cocoa farms have been destroyed in their record numbers. Yet, we are yielding this. And interestingly, they are coming with some new scales to measure. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Thank you for the brains. You can fool some people at a time, but not all of them at all the times. If this is true, I am one of the happiest. But I know this is 419, just like their agenda 111. Lies. Omalewa denche. Letankutin. Kariazala. Shirnwale. My brother. Coco farms have been destroyed. India numbers. Go to Koforidia. Go to the Coco producing areas. Old men and old women have sold farmlands that had cocoa sitting on them to Chinese for Galamsey. They have felled all the trees to the point that EU started having a heart attack and threatened not to buy any cocoa from Ghana. All of a sudden, PR gimmicks. These people, they pay people to talk, not to think. 
So my lecturer, with all respect, sir, comes to say, <laughs> yes, the tons, 1.033 million. <laughs> yes, if you want, you can weigh that and see we have some new scales. <laughs> hey, sir, yo, may God help us. May God help us. May God bless Ghana. May God bless Ghana. May God bless Ghana. Well, my name is Black Rasta, and I want to say thank you so much for coming along with me on this very precious journey of Pan-Africanism and consciousness. What else can I say? What else can I do but to just say thank you? I love you, and I appreciate you. God bless you. Yes, sir. Why? Up, up, in mighty race. Stand and take your rightful place. Full-time, no politicians get some